London, May 5th, 1913. Now playing as Amelia. You stroll arm in arm through the garden of the family townhouse with your fiancé, Francis. Thank goodness we're home at last. One more word of small talk and I would have keeled over on the spot. Now that you mention it, you did rather seem uh, tired of the party. I hope everything's all right. Managed to paste a smile on your face, but glance over your shoulder anxiously as though you're worried you've been followed. Of course I'm all right. Why wouldn't I be? I'd much rather talk about our honeymoon plans. In fact, I was wondering whether we could leave earlier. Earlier? But we've already... Uh... Leaving a few days after the wedding, the travel arrangements have already been made. You sure this isn't something else on your mind? No, there's nothing. I pro. Suddenly, you begin to feel faint, dizzy, and press a hand to your temple. Francis! You collapse to the ground. Amelia! Francis catches you before your head hits the ground. You break out into a fit of coughing as Francis looks frantically around. Effie! Anyone! Ring for anyone! Help! Knowing this could be your last chance, you reach out desperately for his hand, squeezing entirely with the remainder of your strength. Tell my sister blood runs. Blood runs, but you're not bleeding. I, I don't... You shudder in his arms as your lungs constrict and you gasp in vain for air. Amelia! Amelia, please stay with me! Slowly, the vast empty sky above you turns black as you draw your last ragged breath. New York City, one month later, now playing as Amelia's younger sister. At the port, about to embark on your journey, you look upon the ship that will take you across the Atlantic. Oh my god, is it this? Oh my god, no, I don't want to get on. Just a kid joke. And then you turn away, taking in the deep breath and stealing yourself for what lies ahead. Shall we begin by choosing your appearance? We've got a one, a two, a three, and a four. Gonna settle with number three. Excellent. How about your hair? Regal waves. Shimmering debutante. Finger waves. Modern bob. Fiery temptress. White blonde. Curly bun. And brunette updo. I'm gonna go ahead and go with a fiery. Why not? How splendid. What outfit would you like now? We got lasting impression. Or day attire. We just have two outfits. We don't have many. Okay? We, we really don't. I look good, don't I? Perfect! Let's away! <clears throat> You've unlocked... Yeah, no shit. The closet. Lillian. This is it. My turn to take Amelia's place and travel to England to be wed to a complete stranger. You face your younger half-brother, Devin, and then lean down to embrace him. Don't leave us, Lillian. Be good, Devon. It'll just be you and your little brother now. You turn to say goodbye to your stepmother, Delia. I know this will be a big chan change for you, but with Amelia gone, it's your duty to marry Francis Somerset, the future Lord Ashbourne. Try and look on the bright side. You'll be a heiress to a grand estate and future Viscountess. Yes, yes, I know. And our family will gain titles, social currency, in exchange for their bankrupt family gains, our wealth. Delia, you know... I despise being traded away like cattle at a market. There's your rebellious American streak again. They won't be as fond of it in Wincroft, I promise you that. Please take this seriously. There's much at stake for us. I don't. I never understood this. Like I, I never understood this because think about it. Money buys all that. You never needed to exchange children for it. Think about it. Like all these people thought they would be top of the world, right? And yet none of the people at the top of the world right now did this very archaic practice. But I digress. The air horn blasts as the ship readies to depart. She wraps you in a warm embrace, and you catch a whiff of her perfume. Do take care, Lily, and remember to be polite and reserved when you first meet the family. We'll be rooting for you every step of the way. Goodbye, Lilio. Good riddance. 
With one last glance at your family, you head towards the ship, ready to walk across the gangway and say farewell to the life as you know it. Over the course of your week-long transatlantic voyage to England, you take uh, to stay often standing on the deck of the bridge, uh, enjoying the feel of the wind on your face. I wonder what awaits me across these waters. A woman approaches you near the railing. Why do you look so glum? Aren't you excited to be going to England? I don't know if excited is the right word for it. She looks at you questioningly, so you sigh and attempt to explain. My older sister had gone over to England to participate in the social season and find a husband. She got engaged to a noble, but she recently passed. And I'm the only remaining daughter, so I must marry in her place. Ah, I've heard of such arrangements. Bankrupt English peerage allowing with newly wealthy American magnets. How do you feel about the engagement? I feel... angry. Why must I take on the sacrifice for the family, uproot my entire life, and marry a man I've never met before? Mm, they're asking much of you, but who knows, perhaps you'll be able to have more control over your fate than you think. The passenger gives you a little wink and nods her head at you. I wish you luck with your journey. Good day. She leaves you your thoughts, and you turn back to watch the churning waters. A few days later, your automobile finally arrives at the Grand Estate. You look out at the sweeping view of the Windcroft Manor. Mm. Chapter 1 The sun dips below the horizon as you look out the car window at the lavish illuminated estate, stars nestled in the sky behind him. Family and servants are lined up in front of uh, the outside of the estate to welcome you. I wish that Amelia were here to greet me, too. With the chauffeur's help, you emerge from the vehicle as graceful as possible, and a handsome young man steps forward to greet you. We've got a one. <clears throat> we got a two. We got a three. And we got a four. Uh, I think I'm going to go with number two. <clears throat> Welcome to Wincroft Manor. I trust that your journey treated you well as much as long a trans journey, transatlantic journey could anyway. This must be Francis, Amelia's former fiancé, and I suppose my fiancé now too. I should shake his hand, kiss both of his cheeks, curtsy politely. You place one leg behind the other and dip into a curtsy, slightly bowing your head. I'm Miss Lillian Hayes. It's a pleasure to meet you. He gives a slight bow of his head in return, approval visible in his eyes. Perhaps I judged our American cousins too harshly. You seem to have a semblance of decorum, after all. I have long been curious about the man my sister was going to marry, so it's a relief to finally put a face to the name. His eyes twinkle with something like amusement. And what do you think of your new fiancé? Is he every bit as horrible and gruesome as you imagine? I would say that remains to be seen. I'm not easily impressed. You shall have to work to earn my favor. I consider that to be a fair and just conclusion. Unfortunately, I don't back down from a challenge. Excuse me. Another man who has belatedly emerged from the estate clears his throat and looks you over in surprise. I apologize on his behalf for the confusion. I'm Mr. Francis Somerset. He looks sternly over to the other man. You just met Mr. John Somerset, my younger brother, who is too much of a rogue for his own good. Despite his many vices, he was taken in by the family at a young age, and is one of us now. John chuckles as you look between the two brothers in confusion. You may call him Mr. John and me Mr. Francis, so as not to confuse the two of us, as we are both technically Mr. Somerset. So formal, brother. I'm mortified. Please accept my apologies. Amelia never sent me a photograph of her fiancé. No photograph? That is to say, that's understandable, especially for sending posts so far a distance. That surprises me. Aren't all Americans supposed to adore modern technology, or just the ones not brave enough to cross the pond? You're not quite sure how to decipher the younger brother's needling tone. Don't ask me... 
We aren't only American. We are many things, Mr. John. Our birthplace is merely one small fragment. Hmm, is that so? He looks at you appraisingly, a hint of curiosity in his eyes. I expect we'll see what else you're comprised of, then. Ahem. <clears throat> We thank you for you coming all the way from New York, and hope you come to consider this your second home. We know these are unusual circumstances, and if I may say so, you look lovely in that dress. Wouldn't you agree, John? John's eyes meet yours, a faint flush in his cheeks, and he slowly nods his head. I admit that I do find the fashions of New York to be more forward-thinking than those of London. I praise, I thank you, kind sirs. Our parents, Lord and Lady Ashbourne. We'll be back tomorrow. We apologize for your, uh, but your transport was faster than expected. I'll be honored to make their acquaintance when they return. Francis nods at some of the footmen who take your trunks inside. John lets you go first, ushering you towards the door, with what may be a cheeky glint in his eye. After you miss Lillian Hayes. You follow Francis past the entrance hall and into the grand atrium. You sweep your gaze across the room. Welcome to the Wincroft Manor, the historic estate of the Viscount of Ashbourne, and occupied by our family for generations. This is a great hall. My great-great-grandfather first built in 1810s. Though portions were heavily damaged during a fire in 1843, we've been steadily updating it with all the modern conveniences, electric lighting, a telephone line, even a stocks ticker for father. It's... beautiful. I've never seen anything so grand. Your home in America isn't similar. My family's mansion is lovely, but we live in the heart of the city. There's far less space, not to mention land. Francis escorts you around the Grand Saloon, noting some of the decor. My grandfather received this clock as a gift from the Frenchman, Ambassador. You sit down at the ottoman, testing it out. Oh, comfortable. It's not merely for show, is it? I can't wait to bring a book out here. Francis's eyes widen in anger and his Adam's apple bobs. Miss Hayes, please refrain from... He swallows, recomposing himself and turning away. I'm sorry for the, the spell that came over me. It's just that that's where Amelia would often sit and read. Oh, I'm sorry. You stand up hastily. I didn't mean to remind you of her. It's not your fault. It, it can't be helped, can it? I suppose we may as well lay out the situation for what it is. Brother, perhaps we should uh, wait till later. No! We must speak of it now. I consent to this marriage for my family, but you must know that I... I loved Amelia, still do, and I'm still grieving for her. We must play our parts for our families, but I'm afraid that if uh, I'm distanced, that is why. Uh, Francis, I understand I'm also grieving for her. I don't want to be in the situation any more than you do. I wish we hadn't lost her. And at least we are together in that. Beg your pardon for the interruption, sir. You turn to see a servant girl around your age who scurries up to Francis and drops into a hasty curtsy. You asked me to report to you as soon as I heard back about the... Francis cuts her off sharply. Yes, thank you. Francis turns back to you, his demeanor suddenly cold. Forgive me, Miss Hayes. I'm afraid I uh, must attend to an urgent matter. John, would you mind continuing the tour? I will attempt to hold down the fort admirably in your stead. Francis gets a curt bow to you in your direction, barely even glancing at you as he departs with the maid. You and John exchange glances. What was that all about? If I knew everything that went on in my brother's brain, life would be much simpler. I hope you are not too offended by him. He has quite the scattered, uh, well, ever since, you know. John gathers himself up and puts on a wry smile. But I'll do my best to serve as a proper tour guide, as long as you'll accept my somewhat less, uh, educational approach. And by that you mean... As someone taken in by the family, I find the pomp and circumstance of this grand estate a little unnecessary at times. In truth, I've been away traveling for some time. I only returned so I could be of assistance to the family, helping with the wedding preparations and so on. The original wedding, I suppose. Mr. John, when were you taken in by the family? John glances away. 
I'm a distant cousin, joined the family as a newborn. It caused no shortage of scandal, as you can imagine, but here we are. I can understand that all too well. He gestures towards the next set of rooms, dispelling the moment. <clears throat> you probably had some had little interest seeing the stuffier portions of the house. If you like, though, I could escort you somewhere more freeing. What did you have in mind? The gardens are peaceful this time of year. We will we illuminate them at nighttime. I admit I prefer them like uh, this under the moonlight rather than during the day. I could take you to them after a quick tour of a few other rooms. This could be the opportunity I need to familiarize myself and learn the ropes around here. Get a tour. Also gives etiquette, apparently. John offers you his arm. Excellent. Shall we begin the tour? This is the drawing room. It's where we spend a fair amount of time sitting before we're proceeding to sit further in the dining room. Ah, truly fascinating. And what's on this table? It looks like it belongs in a museum. Looks classical. Ah, one of our ancestors collected that. It's a Roman amphora, or a container. Much of our family is interested in ancient civilization. Of course, I hope they took all these artifacts fairly and didn't merely steal them in the name of scholarship, but who am I to judge? He leads you to the next room. This is the study where Francis spends uh, time working on estate matters. Or brooding, more like, whichever you prefer. It's quite grand, and what an interesting object. What is it? It's a music box. Where is it from? It also has a slight antenna on the top. <laughs> okay. John looks embarrassed. I got that in a market in Istanbul. I thought it looked amusing. I suppose I'm not better than in most tourists, then. Nothing wrong with a souvenir. Mm, that's, uh, there's one more place you should probably see. Ah, oh, the library. A good place. This is the library. It's, um, <clears throat> rather dusty. And that's about all I have to share about it. I can't wait to read everything here. I suppose I'll have ample time, too, since I am to live here. Hopefully it'll be more peaceful transition that uh, you anticipate. It leads you through a set of French doors to a moonlit gardens beyond. Pretty. I love nature. You step into the garden path, taking in the sights as John narrates. And here you see the ah, red otis orange flowers in the bloom, right alongside the magenta and white ones. If I were to wager a guess, it's uh, that they were uh, roses gifted to his lordship for service to the crown. There's a lot of that going on around here. You laugh as he escorts you down the path. A fountain bubbles nearby, and a moth flits through the evening light. Ah, and off the garden's edge, you can see folly, which by definition serves no function whatsoever, a fitting symbol of uh, all this opulence. It gestures to a classical-style dome with columns that rise up at the far end of the path. I jest, but I do enjoy the solitude of the gardens. It's one of my favorite parts of returning here, to be honest. You mentioned you had been away recently. Yes, I took a few months away to travel and determine my next steps. I most recently visited Egypt for a spell on my way home from India. Have you ever been? To Egypt? I traveled widely within the States, but this is my first time abroad. Oh, I assumed with your family's wealth that uh, such journeys would be commonplace. You must feel like a fish out of water, then. How are you finding it? I'm enjoying the change of scenery. There's much to adjust to, but I welcome the change. Ah, there's that American courage I've heard so much about. Still, I can appreciate the awkwardness of your situation. It would be only natural to feel conflicted about this whole affair. You stroll along the path, dragonflies darting around you as a lamp illuminates your path. John's voice goes soft with surprisingly sincerity. Much as I love these gardens, I'll never forget the beauty of the lotus blooms dotting the Nile and the peace I felt amongst them. As though realizing he said too much, he closes his throat and shakes his head. Uh, could do without all the mosquitoes. They're not quite my cup of tea. Oh my god, no, so true. Was that the purpose for your travels? To see sights like the Nile? No, that would be far too pleasant, wouldn't it? 
Forgive me, <clears throat> I was serving in India as an officer of the British Army. It was no grand tour. He grimaces and falls silent as you cast a about for a way to change the subject. I hope I can count on you to show me the ropes around here. I've been trained in proper etiquette, but I'm afraid the costumes may be different around here. I'm certain they are, although they're probably equally tedious. What should I keep an eye out for? When my parents return, the first thing they will do is hold a formal dinner. You'll want to be sure to follow my mother's lead during it. For instance, no one can take a bite of food until the lady of the house does so. Follow the hostess, good to know. Yep. She also sets the tone for dinner conversation. When she turns to speak to someone besides her, everyone else turns as well to mirror her actions. So if she turns to her left to speak to someone, we should turn to our left as well. Depending on where you're seated, yes. Exactly. <clears throat> if only people hold such high regard for a woman's example outside of the home. I very much agree. This would be a more uh, useful power in Parliament, for instance. Still, you'll want to be careful. Once I turned the wrong way and nearly planted a kiss on Margaret of Br Bainbridge... That would certainly be a memorable, memorable way to introduce myself to society. I shall do my best to avoid that fate. Which end of the gardens where a wooden bridge curves over a stream below. Oh, I should make a wish. John raises his eyebrows as you open your coin pouch and withdraw a penny from it. A wish. Whatever for. It's an old tradition that me and I used to do whenever we would cross a bridge. And what makes you think your American currency will work in England? You won't spoil my fun much as you try. You squeeze the penny between your thumb and fingers, but close your eyes to concentrate on your witch. I wish to... learn more about my sister. You toss your coin off the bridge with a resounding plink. Wouldn't it be a plunk? Because it's going into water. I'd like to know more of what her life was like here in her last few months. I hope it might bring me peace. John watches you thoughtfully as the penny sinks down below. And then for your sake, I hope you get your wish. You pull a second penny from your pocket and offer it to John. Are you sure there isn't anything you'd like to wish for? Oh, I don't believe that's necessary. Go on, give it a try. What's the harm in it? You drop the coin in his outstretched palm. So I just say my wish, and then... Oi there! Watch where you're going! You might turn at the sudden shout, hearing two servants bickering far down the path, breaking the spell of your privacy. The coin goes scattering out of his hand and slips into the stream. Well, so much for that wish. John stuffs his hands in his pockets and turns back towards the manor. You must be tired after your long journey. I'll call for Miss Watmore to take you to your room. You walk back towards the gravel driveway of the estate. Thank you for showing me around, Mr. John. I appreciate it. At first I was hesitant to travel all this way, but now... I see a silver lining. That's the only way I'll be able to keep going. Besides living on an estate so grand, it could be worse, couldn't it? At his silence, you notice that his expression has turned frosty once more. Is everything all right, Mr. John? Yes, I'm just thinking about how you have uh, much to benefit from the situation. And then again, I'm sure it's difficult for you, too. It can't be easy to be serving as your sister's understudy. <clears throat> Tell me, is it difficult to live in her shadow, or do you rather thrive on the challenge? I beg your pardon. I'm merely stating the truth, the truth no one seems willing to say aloud. Is provoking your guests a staple of the door, or is it just for me? It is neither one nor the other. It is a caution, I think, necessarily when welcoming a stranger to our home. Your definition of welcome is most curious. Let me guess what's going on here. You... I think I'm using your family. I suppose there's some truth to that, but it comes with both sides. My family needs yours for their money, just as much as yours wants our titles and property, after all. 
If not then, then what is it? Are you insinuating that I'm happy that my sister died just so I could inherit all this? Is the thought really that outlandish? There is so much to inherit after all. How dare you! I'm here out of duty, not some ulterior motive. I didn't choose to come here. I didn't choose your titles or land or anything else. My sister chose to marry your brother, and if it was important to her, then I will follow through on that. Even if it means sacrificing on my part, by being around someone as infuriating as you. There is a long pause as the air between you crackles with tension, and then John gives a small smile. <coughs> I suppose I can be infuriating every now and then, can I? At least once a fortnight. That's the impression I'm getting. Well, I apologize. I'm overprotective of my family, for they have given me much. I shouldn't have lashed out at you. I take it my performance was convincing, then. I know it wasn't a performance. I'm skeptical of human nature in general. But I shouldn't have let that blind me in regards to you. Come now. Let's go find Miss Watmore so she can uh, get you settled in your room. You too criticize human nature, I see. You head back into the estate together. As you follow John up the stairs, you pass a painting of him in an army you officer's uniform. This must have been before he left for his tour of India. John gives a brief bow as he hands you off to the care of Miss Watmore, the estate's head housekeeper. I hope you settle in well, Miss Hayes. You give a small curtsy as you watch his figure disappear down the hall. Now then, Miss Effie Ansley will be your lady's maid. She'll be the one looking after you as she did your sister. He glances at the maid as her, at her side, the same one who spoke to Francis earlier. Greetings, Miss Hayes. A pleasure to be of service to you. What's the matter with you, Miss Ainsley? You should curtsy before Miss Hayes, as it is custom. My apologies, Miss. I was just surprised since you and Amelia don't look much alike. We have different mothers. The first marriage ended in divorce. My mother passed away when I was younger. Oh, I see. I'm sorry if I reminded you of that loss. I'm glad to make your acquaintance. I know you American ladies follow a different path, but I'll tell you what I told Amelia. The surest way to make your stay pleasant is to behave. This is a high-ranking family with a long, noble tradition, and it wouldn't do to stick your nose where it doesn't belong. She sniffs. At least you see fit to dress the part. That's a start, anyway. Listen, I swear to God, if you keep back-talking me, I'm gonna backhand you. Miss Watmore. I'll act as I please. It's my family's money that will be paying the bills around here, after all. Of course, you're free to do anything you choose, but don't expect it to serve you well during your stay. Listen, I will fire you. Stay. You say that like it's temporary. I'll leave you two to get acquainted. Let me know if there's anything further you require. Miss Watmore departs, and Effie ushers you into your room. I don't trust the old woman already. <clears throat> All this is mine. It's so extravagant. Heavy smiles as she begins unpacking your belongings from a steamer trunk in one of the corner of the room. I hope you'll, it'll feel like home to you, Miss Hayes. We're eager to make you feel comfortable. Oh, and before I forget, there's something I wanted to give you. She fetches an envelope from the vanity and hands it to you. It's Amelia's wax seal. Before she died, Amelia instructed me to give this to you. She wasn't able to post it to America herself. And then, in all the chaos of the night, I, I forgot all about it. By the time I found it again, you, you were already on your way here. You quickly unfold the letter from Amelia and begin to read. Dear Lillian, I don't have much time to explain everything to you. I found out a terrible secret, and I fear that someone is after me. I cannot write much more, as Francis is expecting to meet with me soon. I don't know what he wants. I must behave as though nothing is wrong around him, so I do not raise any alarms. I'm unsure who to trust, if that unspeakable scenario comes to pass. 
My dear Lillian, I want you to know how strong you are and how much you fill my heart. Your loving sister, Amelia. Okay. So you're not gonna tell us what this terrible secret was? Picture one. You've acquired the first collectible and for your vanity mirror. Mmm, okay. Heavens, this letter makes it sound as if there was a foul play involved in my sister's death. But it couldn't be murder, could it? You gained your first clue. You turn to Effie, who is still putting away your belongings. Effie, I know the doctor said Amelia died of natural causes, but I have to ask. Were you there when it happened? Did anyone seem unsurprised? Did anything seem odd that day? Nothing is coming to mind, I'm afraid. But then I was very busy, especially since Miss Amelia had just returned from debutante ball. Why? Is there something in the letter that makes you think... Do you think that someone did something to her? You glance back at the letter and its hastily pinned words with a terrible secret. This proves that someone really was after her. No, I was just wondering. You hold the letter close to your chest, willing your sister to hear your thoughts. I'm so sorry for what happened to you, Amelia, but I promise I will get to the bottom of this and avenge your death. Yes, but the blood flows. He didn't tell you that yet. The blood flows. Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Head down description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content, it would be greatly appreciated to have you become a part of the community. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, and uh, again, there's many other ways you can become a part of the community as well, um, you know, and just hang out, chat with people, etc. One of the most is Discord. Um, without further ado, let me know how you feel about this book. I know uh, because of VIP and everything else, I kind of took a stance there for a while, and the only reason I'm covering it now is because people are like, yo, listen, I want VIP and all this other shit, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just... Oh, I guess just catching up and, and doing it for you guys. Um, because all in all, I just don't give a crap. That's why I've had VIP, right? But I haven't, like, jumped on this stuff. Because I've just been kind of, like, you know, busy and everything else. So, yeah. No, love you beautiful faces. But uh, without further ado, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you all later. Peace out.